this carousel looks pretty awesome. Let's see if we can do some uh, longer exposure. Yeah, that might be an epic fail, I don't know. And it looks pretty cool and I reckon we can get something quite cool. Happy New Year everyone, welcome back to the channel. I really hope you had an awesome time and you made the most of it. I surely did. <laughs> now, to kickstart 2024, I thought I'd touch up on the subject of low light photography. Seeing a lot of people seem to either struggle with it or not kind of like too sure about the settings. Personally, I used a Sony Xperia 1 Mark 5, but you're obviously free to use whatever mobile phone you already have, as long as you use an app that allows you to use full manual controls as well as shooting in raw format. Also make sure to stick around till the end of the video where I'll share all my top tips on how to shoot in low light on a mobile phone. Now, enough with the talking, let's jump straight in. So very often you'll hear people saying you can't take nice photos at night with a phone and to a certain extent, I mean, you could say they're right because all we have on the mobile phone is a tiny little sensor, 99% of the time a fixed aperture and a small stabilization system, not like a full-on in-body image stabilization that you get on a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. So then you're probably thinking, well, hang on, what about the Samsungs of the world and the Apples with their uh, nighttime mode? Well, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of those because they tend to kind of give you like a, a quite a fake and HDRE look to the photos. Nine times out of 10, I prefer using the uh, full manual mode and that's what we're gonna explore today. So right now I'm heading into the city. It's not quite dark just yet but uh, we're gonna do a mixture of kind of low light and indoors and nighttime shots. So we're just gonna go out there, see what we can find, and um, I'll, talk you, I'll talk you through it. So whilst I was heading to the sea, I just found this little um, side road here. Uh, taking a few pictures here before, but um, we're just gonna wait for someone to, uh, to walk past, and it's gonna look quite nice actually. So if we set the camera on 85, yeah, 85 mils. ISO, good bump it up to 400. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's gonna look quite nice. And shutter speed about 60, 60 for a second. And now it's just a matter of waiting for someone to walk into the frame. I don't know if you guys can see. So yeah, I managed to get a couple of shots. They're not the shots of the century, uh, but it kind of uh, just shows what we're going for especially in terms of settings. And right on the same street, I just uh, saw this shop that looks actually pretty good. So let's see if we can get something nice here. We've got 24 mil. There we go. Sorry. Well exposed, yeah, no, happy with that. Oh, and the roads are keep on giving. Look at that, little toy shop. Let's see if we can get something with that. Uh, right, let's get back to the camera. Let's see if we can get something. Cool, so I don't know how it's gonna, what it's gonna look like. If it was a nice shot, you'll see it on the screen. <laughs> but yeah, nice. Three shots on the same street. Right, now it's getting proper dark. So heading into the city and see what we can find here. So inevitably, because we're shooting in low light with a mobile phone, you're definitely gonna have to crank up your ISO. But I mean, if you're using Lightroom Classic, like I do, uh, you can get rid of uh, most of the noise anyway. So you can probably safely crank your ISO up to about five, 600 uh, without major issues. Now the other day I was walking past um, Gerald's. For, the, for those of you who don't know what a Gerald's is, it's a bit like Harrods in London. It's like a department store sort of thing. So where they sell pretty much everything and anything. But when I walked past I saw them uh, your windows. You'll see the seconds. There you go. And it looks pretty cool, and I reckon we can get something quite cool. So 24 mils, um, ISO, we're gonna ch -ch -ch go, hang on, I'm gonna get out of the way because I'm in the middle of everyone's way. Uh, we're probably gonna stick to 100 ISO, 
and shutter speed doesn't matter we're just gonna have a look at what it looks like so far uh, probably increase the ISO to 200 to be honest yeah that looks absolutely fine and now what we can do is frame that and I don't know if you can actually see on the camera and maybe the last one we all three little windows see what that actually looks like uh, yeah cool cool so I took a few shots here and um, I'll go through them all and see which ones are the best now, as you can see the city is all in uh, still in Christmas mode because I'm recording this video right after Christmas but I know you guys have been watching it in a year but hence why all the decorations <laughs> but now it's getting proper dark so I don't know if you guys can actually see anything um, but I quite like this um, little side street there there's a staircase um, up the wall there and you've got the light lamppost the telephone box and the sky in the background so let's see I'm um, currently 24 mil ISO 400 and uh, 40th of a second shutter speed so let's see if we can get something there so yeah that's nice quite a bit of noise but nothing that we can sort out in post so yeah I just found this little alleyway I don't know how the picture is gonna come out to be honest uh, might be alright actually quite gritty kind of thing uh, quite like it I mean you'll see on the screen guys but yeah, I stayed again 400 ISO because I don't want to push it too high and uh, stay within the range of non shakiness world kind of thing with 40th of a second. That's probably as steady as I can get. Now, I'll see if I can um, get a shot I've always wanted to take, but I've never actually taken. It's the top of the roofs of the markets in Norwich. God, this is a bit high, so I don't know if you guys will be able to see. Oh, I'll lift the camera. Um, but yeah, let's try to do something with that. Uh, if I get towards the middle to be centered ish and we're gonna go tenth of a second try to get stable enough with the side here with the wall and gonna drop the ISO to 100 to be as sharp as possible and let's give it a shot like literally <laughs> Okay, that might be an epic fail, I don't know. Um, again, if you see the picture on the screen, yeah, it means I got the shot. If not, then, you know, it, it just goes to show, try uh, things, try new things you've never tried. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, then, oh well, <laughs> at least you've tried. This carousel looks pretty awesome. Um, let's see if we can do some uh, kind of a long exposure, see what we can get out of that. Now we talked about filters in the last video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the um, black mist filter on this one. All it does is kind of smooths these out the, the, the highlights and kind of make a halo around the lights, which should look pretty neat on this one. So what I'm going to do, just going to pop my filter on there and if you want to take it off, again, magnet on and off. Okay, uh, if you want to know all about it and the brand, just go and have a look at the video. That was my last video just a matter of finding the right angle I do like the uh, cathedral down the well, church in the background so if we go around the side here yeah that looks pretty awesome there so if we go down to let me lower the camera so you can see the settings if we go down to ISO 25 because we're gonna leave the shutter open for longer uh, shutter speed probably half a second that should do it now I'm going to head over to Chantry Place, a little um, shopping centre here in Norwich and see if I can get some um, indoor shots. Right, so I've come to the foot court now, there's always something happening, <laughs> always people eating. So um, see if we can get something interesting, 85 mil. Auto ISO and 30th of a second. Let's just wait for something interesting to happen.
So now I've come on the other side, uh, so I think you guys can see. Come to the other side and see if I can get something from this angle. Uh, I'm just going to wait for someone to walk past now. Interesting subject, someone wearing, I don't know, like a red top or something. Got quite a few shots anyway, so I can uh, go through them on the Lightroom and see which one's best. So you guys can probably, uh, I don't know, yeah you can probably see it. Uh, I've taken a picture there before, but um, I'll do another one. It's just to, um, a matter of waiting for someone to enter the frame. One, two, three. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, got a picture there. I don't know how it's going to come out because literally I took it in a rush. <laughs> um, yeah, that should be alright actually. This one was 85mm um, automatic ISO and a 30th of a second. Now, if you're wondering why I've left um, ISO on automatic when I go inside the uh, shopping centre, it's because it's fairly lit up anyway, and I knew they wouldn't go over four or five hundred ISO anyway. So, as long as you control your ISO in low light, whether you're inside or outside, you're absolutely fine. So, like I said before, just make sure you don't go over five, six hundred ISO. Otherwise, you you probably run into trouble in terms of noise and artifacts. But since I'm in a busy kind of area where all the shops and the restaurants are, I might as well do um, a few shots of um, outside windows of restaurants. Always kind of looks nice as well. So for this one, I'll probably go for 85 mil because we're kind of uh, far away, and 80 of a second because we don't want over expose the shadow the uh, the highlights always expose for the, the highlights basically uh, especially in night time we're gonna go for probably about 320 ISO and yeah let's get let's get shooting through the leaves here that looks quite good actually Ooh, that guy wiping the table that's quite cool if he steps into the light Yeah, I got the shot. Okay, that's cool. Happy with that. Let's move it on. Let's find another restaurant. That one was alright, actually. We started spitting a little bit, it's raining, so I'm gonna start heading back home because I think we got quite a few shots today. Right, so I took a few more pictures, but I'll put them on the screen here. Um, but you know me, I kind of forgot to press the record button, so I thought I'd just put the, the, the pictures on the screen. So I hope this video has shown you that you can actually shoot in low light on a mobile phone as long as you stick to certain rules. So that's what I'm gonna go through now my top tips on how to achieve better photos at night. So tip number one for you guys is to shoot in raw format. And the reason for that is because it allows for way more room in terms of editing in post, uh, when it comes to shadows, colors, noise, and it's just something that's not possible in JPEG. The second tip is to shoot in full manual controls. And the reason for that is because when you shoot in automatic, the camera will kind of try to expose for certain things that you don't want to be exposed, and by doing so, it will increase the ISO, it will increase your shutter speed, and you'll just end up with a mush of pixels. So when you shoot in full manual, you're in control of what your picture is gonna look like in the end. Number three, keep your ISO as low as possible. I know it's very obvious, but the higher you go, the more noise you will get in your picture, and the harder it will be to, uh, to get rid of it in post afterwards. So, I'd say as a rule of thumb, just keep it between 25 and 5, 600 max and you'll be absolutely fine. But yeah, just control the ISO because if you was on automatic mode, uh, obviously you'll probably go all the way up to 1600, 3200. And again, the quality you know, it will be completely lost. And what you want to maintain in your photos is clarity and detail. 
Tip number four is to expose for the highlights. And the reason for that is because it's so easy, believe it or not, it's so easy at nighttime doing uh, low light photography to blow out your, um, your highlights. And the reason for that is because the camera is trying to expose the photo to be bright, as bright as possible by raising all the shadows. But ultimately what that does, it increases the highlights. And so the reason to keep your ISO and your shutter speed as low as possible is to increase the amount of light that gets through to the sensor. And don't worry about your shadows because most of it can be recovered in post afterwards. Now, tip number five is a little bit harder, but it's try to be steady. When you shoot in low light, you'll be playing with very low shutter speeds. And in terms of shutter speed, I don't recommend going lower than the 30th of a second if you're doing everything handheld. The reason for that is because the lower the shutter speed, the more chances that you create any motion blur whilst you even click on the shutter button or if you slightly move your, your phone. So always try to find uh, something in your surroundings to, to put your phone on to help you kind of stabilize your shots, like a wall, a table, or even better, use a tripod. And my last tip for you guys is to use a software that has a very good denoising, especially um, AI denoising of the likes of Lightroom Classic or Topaz Photo AI. Those denoising methods are much better than the old ones in terms of getting rid of all the noise and the artifacts in the photos. They really do work miracles and sometimes it'll be the difference between a shot that you can't use at all and a shot that you will be really proud of. Um, if you haven't seen how it all works, you can go and watch my video in my previous, one of my previous videos about how I edit my photos where I, I use the AI denoising in Lightroom Classic. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you do subscribe to the channel, really helps me a bunch. And also don't forget to click the like button. I do release content on a weekly basis, but um, on these good words, I'm going to love you and leave you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.